is a solid fish. Super fat. Holy crap. What's up everybody? Today we're going to prepare more for the ice fishing season by tying this killer jig. So as we get this started, you may be wondering what the heck is in my vise right now? Well, it is the shank of a streamer hook. Basically a 3 quarter inch long shank. And I cut the curve off of that hook so it's just the shank. And we're going to tie a couple of these together so we can add a treble hook to this lure. So I put one of those hook shanks into my vise. And then I'm going to take another one the same size. So we're going to start our thread right there at the end of that shank. And then we're going to bring that back up. And we're going to take another shank the same size from the same type of hook. And just tie that in so they overlap. You want about, I'd say, two thirds of it to overlap. Maybe three quarters. And then just tie that down nice and tight. And this will basically just connect those two shanks. Now we're going to whip finish that. Just a quick whip finish. Then clip our thread. And now I'm just going to add super glue so that thing stays together. We don't want it to ever come apart. So just coat that thing in super glue. And then while that glue is still wet, we're going to take a large scud back. This is a tungsten scud back, it'll make this thing sink like a rock. We're just going to place that right in the middle. And then leave that to dry. Now once our glue is dry, we're going to come in with some really thick floss. This is a chartreuse floss. We're just going to tie that on like it's thread. And this is just going to help us build up a body and just cover that in chartreuse. And now we're going to take a piece of nymph skin. This is a natural grub color. We're just going to cut the end of that to a point and tie that in right behind that scud back. Make sure it's tied down well. And then we're going to, like I said, cover this in a layer of chartreuse and get rid of the seam between the scud back and the hook shank as well as we can. Make sure we cover all of that tungsten. We want it to be a solid color so that when we start wrapping this nymph skin, it'll be nice and even. Okay, now we're going to whip finish that floss. Clip it off. And now we're going to use some regular thread. This is a 6 aught uni thread in chartreuse. So we're just going to start that and then clip off the tag end. And just make sure that's secured well. And now we're going to start wrapping our nymph skin. We want to put a steady pressure on it, not too much pressure. You just want to put a little bit so it stretches out slightly. And you just want each wrap to overlap the previous wrap about halfway. And we're just going to do this all the way up to the head. Make sure you try not to change the pressure that you're putting on that. You want to make sure you keep a steady pressure. And this will just create a nice, fat, grubby body that looks super natural. And once we get that up to the head, we can tie it down nice and tight. Try not to get too close to the eye of that hook because we don't want to cover it. Then we're going to stretch that nymph skin back and go over that once again. And clip it off as close as you can. Looks like I got a little too close to the eye, but I can still tie a knot so that'll be fine. Now we're going to whip finish. And 
and clip that off. And then put a little drop of super glue on there just to make sure it stays together. We do not want that nymph skin to come undone. There we go, make sure the glue is dry. And once it's dry, we're going to take a split ring. This is a size one split ring. And we're gonna take a little treble hook. This is size 14. We're going to put our treble hook onto the split ring. If you have a split ring pliers, that is very helpful, but you can also use your bodkin or a needle or something like that to get that hook on there. Just like that. And now we're going to open that up again so that we can get it onto the eye of that hook shank. So slide that in and then just feed that ring through until it's all the way on. Make sure not to hook yourself. And there we go. So this is the grubby lure. This is one of my favorites as you can use a treble hook to increase hookups. You can always tie this on a regular hook, but I love to use the treble hook. So you can see it'll just jiggle there in the water. You can add bait or not, you don't have to, but you could put a wax worm on there or whatever you want. So let's take this thing out and see how it does. Oh. Holy crap. Caught it on this little ice jig. And I didn't even have bait, I was just using the jig, just jigging off the bottom. Basically ice fishing from my float tube with this ice rod. Caught that hog. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Let's throw that one back. Wow. Look at the size of that bluegill. That is a solid fish. Super fat. Look at its belly. Its gut is popping out. Dang, that thing's massive. Look at that chunk. Another on that ice jig. This one's the green. But yeah, they're loving it. Look at that. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Nice rainbow. I'm gonna take that one home for dinner. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And make sure to check out my new website, mustachejigsandflies.com. I will leave a link to the website in the description. There you can buy jigs just like this one. Also crappie jigs, trout jigs, other ice jigs, and custom fishing rods. So check that out, and we will see you next time.